Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 189 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Barbara. What's happening, Barb? How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Just got back from the uh, Whitmix Digital Forum, and we had a really great trip and talked to a lot of wonderful people, and I really enjoyed going to a meeting, so I'm still high. Yeah, like, yeah. You have recouped from everything? I mean, you, you all yeah. right? It was pretty crazy there. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I have no uh, problems flying to or fro and talked to a lot of people. And, yeah, we yeah. did. I'm in a great mood. Let's give a big shout out and thanks to Whitmix for putting on such a great event and for Preet for allowing us to set up. It was just a really good turnout and a lot of fun. Already looking forward to next year. Me too. I'm in. Of course, when I got back home the next day, I wanted to go for a run and it was 24 degrees out. Oh my God. Yeah, it's happened. It's happened. Yes. I know. I'm not already. I'm (laughs) Not too happy yeah, about I'm hitting that, that winter depression. Things happen when it's cold out like that when you're on a run. I can usually run when it's pretty cold, but 22. Ugh. Yeah, so now it's uh, more afternoon running for a while oh, yeah. as the sun heats up. And then I'm sure they're, what is it, like 60 or something? That's uh, probably 75 today. God, In the mornings, it's probably 68, 9. <laughs> yeah, and that's a cold front for us too. So <laughs> I'm enjoying that weather going on my workouts i would pay to have that <laughs> i know you would be jealous i am so last week we talked to the denture babes which of course had a lot of social media i'm trying to think of the best way to put this innuendos yeah well i had a lot of social media uh well let's just say last week we talked to the denture babes yeah it was a lot of fun but just a reminder that the first 500 orders that is placed before november 14th they're going to be getting a limited edition metallic Voices from the Bench sticker. Cool. Make sure you head over to any of our social media platforms to see this amazing, awesome sticker. And if you want to know more about who's behind DentureBabes.com, go check out last week's episode, 188, and then go and place an order for some of the greatest clothing in our industry. It really is. It is just amazing. Super. A lot of different things. So many different choices. Great Christmas presents. Go check it out. I'm torn between the human skull and the walking, creeping denture. I'm actually it's like, which way do I go? Creepy. Maybe I go both. Who knows? <gasps> Don't say that on the podcast, Elvis. Oh, I see. <laughs> My mind is always there. You know, I'm sorry. Bad, bad. Bad, Barbara. Barb, come on. So do you remember way back when we talked to Stefan Robachow, Robachar, Robacar? Robach. I'm going to use that. All right. In his Swiss school of prosthetics. Do you remember that episode? Yes, I do. Yeah, that was way back. I think it was back. 147. How do you know that? Do you know all the episodes? Oh, hell By yeah. By heart? Absolutely. You're amazing. <laughs> well, if you recall, Stefan and the Edmonds Dental Prosthetics have put together a fantastic school that actually started in Switzerland. He talks all about it in that episode. Full dentures are a frequently underestimated but nevertheless challenging form of restoration. The Swiss School of Prosthetics gives you and your dentist the anatomical and prosthetic knowledge required for each step to deliver high quality full dentures. Now, they have finally and officially announced the schedule for all of 2022. If you're looking to get in some education next year, this is a great place to do it. So head over to ssop.swiss forward slash en for English, because it's also in whatever the language is in Switzerland. (laughs) What are the Swedish? I think so. Okay. Okay. E-N for English, because they also have it in Swedish, to see the great courses and to sign up to take your skills to the next level. Well done. Barely. Didn't even breathe. (sighs) There you go. But this week, we have a great episode. As you know, life in the lab can be stressful, and there are companies out there that try to make it easier. But one way is to help with lab management software. 
You know, running production, invoicing, all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. But what if one could communicate directly with the dental offices to keep everybody in the know? That's where EasyRx comes in. EasyRx is a software that is a combination of two softwares that are trying to make life easier in the lab. Tom Blankenbleckler and Andy Stark come on the podcast to talk about the history of the software, how it can help strengthen the communication between labs and dentists, and how they can even save you time and labor by helping you print your models. So join us as we chat with Todd Blankenblecker and Andy Stark. Grow3x is a dental supply, service, and marketing company. It was founded by Norbert Palmer, and his goal with Grow3x is to help dental labs, and especially small labs, to lower their costs for supplies, provide business opportunities, and generate growth. Anybody can work with Grow3x and buy from them at a very attractive prices. They carry amazing zirconia burrs, and their rainbow burrs are for PMMA and Trilore, are top notch. They also carry zirconia from Adite and a wide range of Harvest dental products and different 3D print resins. What's really cool about Grow3x is that you can join their Grow3x family program for only 99 cents. What? I know. It's amazing. It's cheaper than the dollar store. Hell yeah. This will then give you an additional 10% discount on all of their supplies and even their CAD CAM design and fabrication services. You've got to try it. They really want to help labs save and grow as they know how hard it is competing with the large groups. And by the way, did you guys know that Norbert from Grow3x used to have his own lab some 10 years ago? So he really does know what labs need. Get a three-month trial membership with Grow3x Family now for only 99 cents and receive three Shade Peg shots free of charge. Shade Peg is a great stump shade material to better match even the most difficult shade. So if you're doing all ceramics, Shade Peg is where it's at. So go over to Grow3x.com and add the Grow3x family to your cart. Then add three Shade Peg shots of 3cc each to your cart and then go to check out. But first, before you buy, enter the discount code VFTB for Voices from the Bench and then you check out. Boom! It's that easy. We appreciate your support of the podcast, Grow3x. Voices from the Bench. The interview. We'd like to welcome to the podcast today two gentlemen that are from EasyRx. Now, EasyRx, I've seen you guys at a lot of conventions, but I don't know exactly what EasyRx is. So we'd like to welcome Andy Stark and Todd Blankenbeckler. How did I do? Very did good. I do all right? Todd Blankenbeckler. Yeah. How are you guys? Doing great. Good. You got my name right, too. <laughs> That's a first. <laughs> so I'd like to kind of find out how you guys got into this role of running software that helps labs organize and find out exactly what it is. Maybe I will go first. Yeah, Todd, go ahead. So the story with EGRX is myself and an orthodontist in New York City named Dr. Mark Limchin. We were principals in a orthodontic practice management software company called Dolphin. Yep, I've heard of that. Mark actually had started Dolphin back in the actually late 90s, and I joined Dolphin in 2003. And we had sold Dolphin to Patterson in 2008. And I continued to work at Dolphin Patterson. Uh, Mark is a full-time orthodontist, so he kept working at his practice. But we kept looking for another software company because we enjoy growing companies up, if you want to think of it that way. Mm -hmm. And Mark actually implemented EZRX at his practice. Uh, EZRX was started by a lab in Buffalo named ODL Lab. And ODL Lab wanted to build a digital platform to connect their customers, their practices with ODL Lab to receive the prescriptions, to receive the supporting digital files, 
And then on the lab side at ODL Lab, put the case into workflow. So move it through production and do invoicing. So they had developed a EasyRx to manage ODL and to uh, receive cases from their customers. Was this a full service lab? It is a full service lab. Still around. Still around. So this software is created by a lab. Yeah, originally created by a lab. Didn't realize that. And they started trying to sell EasyRx commercially. And, you know, really a lab trying to do software and not a full-time focus. And through that, Mark started using EasyRx at his practice, really fell in love with it. So Mark and I reached out to EasyRx, the owners of ODL Lab at the time, Jim Wright and Mike Wright, a father-son. We reached out to Jim and Mike, expressed an interest, and we ended up acquiring EasyRx from ODL Lab in of late 2015. Hmm. And we went into the transaction really thinking that one of the real benefits of EZRX was the benefit to the practice in that practices really need help managing their cases. They may do business with multiple labs and they've got, you know, two or three, four ways to submit, manage and track all their cases, depending on how that particular lab, their, their lab that they do business with wants that done. So we really went into the transaction planning to make EZRX more practice focused and to build this universal lab prescription platform. We acquired the business late 15. We spent 16 kind of re-engineering the business. We did a little round of funding. I quit the cushy corporate job February 1, 2017, and we went full-time at EZRX. So you were doing both of them at the same time? For about 15 months, I was full-time at Dolphin and kind of working EZRX, you know, nights and weekends. Yeah. We had... One full-time employee came with the deal, Tom Zambito, who is still with us. He's our lead software engineer on EZRX. And then we had hired a support tech person, middle of 16, and we hired a sales rep towards the end of 16. So we had people day-to-day that were, you know, handling the transactions, but I was working nights and weekends on it. So we, you know, we kind of go great guns beginning 17. And again, our What our vision is, we're trying to build a universal lab prescription digital workflow platform to connect practices and labs. And our ultimate vision is we want every practice in the world and every lab in the world to use an EZRX product. So how do you go about doing that? Well, let's start off first. That's a jump to the end question. (laughs) (laughs) When did you get involved, Andy? Yeah, let me tell my side of the story. So Genmar has been in the dental laboratory industry since 1986. It was founded by Louis Marchand. It's a name that a lot of your listeners will recognize. They've known him um, for years. And I came into the picture around 1998. I was attending the University of Florida in my undergraduate studies after I'd gotten out of the Navy. And I was browsing ads one day, and there was a an ad for a technical support tech you know representative. And so I responded. I showed up to Lewis's office wearing a suit and tie and I walk in and there he is sitting in shorts and flip-flops. <laughs> this is Florida. So I was a little overdressed for the role, but uh, he hired me that afternoon and started doing support of uh, the lab product at the time. It's called DL Plus. It had just been released a couple of years earlier. Uh, it was the second uh, dental laboratory management product Genmar had released. The first one was a DOS version that came out you know, in the early 80s. So I spent the first part of my career talking to labs over the phone, helping them out with, you know, support, you know, report problems, how do I use the software? And then I got into going on site and doing training and installation. So I tried to calculate the other day how many labs I've been in. I know there's folks who in sales and, you know, business have been in more, but I, I think right now it's probably over two or 300 um, that wow. I can just kind of come up with. And just lots of labs out there that I've, so I've made a lot of really close friends in this industry. Spent a lot of time helping them implement software in the laboratory. You can make good friends in the lab business by helping them with their production flow. <laughs> you can certainly make friends that way. What was the right. name of that software again? That was DL Plus. Is that still around? I'm not heard. It of is. It is oh, okay. actually still in use. Several labs or lots of labs still using it. Huh. Um, in, in fact. I was at a lab show, I think it was the last LMT show before the lockdowns, and I had some come up to me and told me they were still using the DOS program. Oh, I wow. That. 
I was like, do you mind like cloning that drive and shipping it to me? Because I'd pay for that to have it run somewhere. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was really fascinating to hear his story. If it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> That's the mentality, right? If it's not broken, don't fix it. So fast forward a little bit. I did installations, did a little bit of, started doing development of the product, mostly from the report writing and database angle, uh, adding features. Grew into a general manager role there with Genmar. And eventually Lewis uh, retired and we, you know, put a succession plan in place and which ended up, essentially I became the, the owner of Genmar hmm. eventually. And Lewis is uh, still in Gainesville, Florida, enjoying a retirement today. And then around, around that same time, I knew that we needed to build, you know, the what's next and was looking at the different technologies. Uh, looking at the the trends in the industry, this was after really the digital revolution that had occurred. Sure, and you know, looked forward to you know what are we going to need to stay relevant and to be able to serve labs that are moving into this digital reality that they're in now. And where we settled was we we wanted a new lab management product that had the DNA, really the lessons learned from DL Plus, but was built on a modern scalable development stack. So around 2015, I remember distinctly sitting with, um, you know, I hope it's okay to name drop on this, uh, Chris Walter yeah. at LMT. And oh, we were talking about yes. sustainability yeah. and how do you move forward with your business? And, and I just, it just dawned on me that we had to do this. We had to move forward with a new product. We couldn't rest on you know, what we've done in the past. So Started working on that late 2015, early 2016, hired some developers that were going to help us build this moving forward. And then I think it was around the 2018, Todd, I can't remember, where, where did we meet? Was it the 2018 or 2017 LMT Lab Day? So you guys met at LMT as well, huh? We met at LMT as well. Wow. I think it was 18. I think so too. Yeah. I think it was the 2018 Lab Day show in Chicago. This guy walks up to me hands me a flyer about something called EasyRx, and uh, we start talking about maybe doing an integration. Really the last thing on my mind at the moment, because I was trying to get this product built and out the door and into the market. But as we started talking more and more, I saw it as a way to really differentiate our lab management software and having a platform to connect the practices to the labs in real time, really. When those prescriptions are submitted, they show up in the lab right then. And any questions that they may have can be funneled, you know, sent back to the practice. So this became really intriguing to me. And, you know, we started talking about integration initially, but then it really led to questions of, well, why, why wouldn't we just merge the two companies? Why wouldn't we work together in that manner? So I'll stop there and let Todd add anything, or, or, but that's where I came from. So how do you go about merging those two companies? I guess, Todd, you can take it from there. So then where'd you go? So this would have been the spring, summer of 19. Yeah. And you know, back to our vision of we want this universal lab prescription digital workflow platform to connect practices and labs. And as we were having some success in our market, we were expanding the number of labs using EasyRx software and we would get requests from our labs. Hey, it's great that I can receive my cases from EasyRx, but I'm really looking for a lab management solution. On the EasyRx side, EasyRx came out of a ortho lab. So we have some answers for an ortho lab, but EasyRx, the lab piece, really doesn't handle really a dental lab nor a large scale dental lab. Mm -hmm. So we had a need or we felt that we should have a solution for the dental lab management space. So as Andy said, I went looking for integration partners. And the more Andy and I talked, the more it made sense that, you know, what if we were to merge EZRX and Jidmar? And so we initiated those discussions. And the way we ended up structuring the deal, EZRX acquired Jinmar in July of 19. So we've actually been one company now for a little over two years. Because of the brand of Genmar and Genmar being around in the space, we felt it was important to keep that brand. So we've kept the Genmar website. We've kept the Genmar name. It's just we're all one company now. And so behind the scenes, you know, we merged, you know, all the employees and the CRM systems and 
help desk systems and all that, we're all on the same platform there, share resources, all that good stuff. And so now we really have, you know, a, a unique offering in the market in that we, with Genmar Visual DLP, you know, the cloud-based product Andy spoke to, we now have a you know, very comprehensive dental lab management product. And then we also have EZRX, which offers the practice, you know, comprehensive case management, digital workflow. And then for both practices and labs, we also have EZRX 3D, which is software to prepare print-ready 3D models. Because as you know, more and more labs are into 3D printing and that would include in-house labs, right? A lot of practices oh, yeah. are buying 3D printers with the practice to print models also. So for both EZRX and Digital DLP, we have access to EZRX 3D for the labs that want to have 3D software. So you could have one or the other or both, the EZRX and the lab management software? Yeah, think of it like this. So you could sign up for visual, let's say you're a lab. Uh-huh. So you sign up for Visual DLP, okay. and then you can invite your practices to start using EZRX to send cases to the lab. Mm-hmm. And so you can invite your practices, and that's all included in your Visual DLP price. Our pricing is based on volume, okay. That but they can sense. invite their practices for no additional charge, and then the practices you know, receive an invite email, they can create their account and start sending cases to the lab that invited them. Mm-hmm. But if there are features in EZRX that they want to add to their EZRX account, let's say they have an in-house lab and they want to start managing their in-house lab, they have a 3D printer at the practice, yep. then they can upgrade their plan on the practice side for those features. Okay. But if they just want to send cases to their lab using Visual DLP, then they can do that. And that's included in the price on the visual DLP lab side. That's amazing. So they have a choice. It can go to the right or to the left. Okay. And the practice doesn't have to pay anything. They only have to pay if they want to upgrade their system to take advantage of features for the practice. The lab would not pay for that. What about digital impression files? Would that come through? Yes. At no additional charge to the practice. At no additional charge. So they can attach their STLs to the prescriptions and, and then send that to the lab. Interesting. And I think what Andy was saying, you're able to communicate with the practice directly at, in real time? Yeah, there's a couple ways to do that. Like uh, there's a there's a comment feature and a clinical notification feature, mm-hmm. which allow communication to go back and forth about that particular case. And what's nice is everything's protected behind logins and the server, right? Mm-hmm. So it's secure and encrypted and all that good stuff. So it's much better than sending an email, let's put it that way. Yeah, I'll say. Or a little scrap of paper in with the case. (laughs) Or a scrap of paper in the case. That was my style. (laughs) As you guys were going over the timeline of when all this happened, wasn't this like almost pre-COVID? Yeah, exactly. We merged two companies July of 19. Uh Uh-huh. So we were really kind of getting things really dialed in right around March of 20. Yep. And so, like all of us, we took a pause <laughs> for a few months. Yep. Uh, you know, but like the labs, you know, practices have been really busy, you know, since May, June-ish of 20. Mm-hmm. I think most of 20 was just catch up and get our heads back above water. We've been really busy in 21 as labs really think, you know, now now I can take a breath and really think what's my long-term te- technology plan. I'm on this whatever legacy lab management system. Maybe I need to do something. I want to get my practices engaged better. We see labs doing that more now, certainly than they did last year. Yeah, we're all doing it, I think, a little more than we ever did before. We Exactly. It's yeah. just that timeline, you know, to have those companies merge and to, to have all of that. I think it's uh, pretty crazy that that was your timeline as you guys were moving forward with this whole plan. Yeah, the days are not without calls and hard work, right? We're not just cruising along right now. Yeah. So where does EZRX usually start? Are there more practices that are getting it and then recommending it to labs or vice versa? It's really practices engaging their labs. Okay. We have really positioned it as a solution for practices to better manage or run or improve their practice. So practices will implement EZRX 
to manage their cases. If they have an in-house lab, manage their in-house lab, track all of their cases. Uh, we integrate with, I think, 14 practice management software systems. So we really facilitate integration. We integrate today with iTero and Medit, talking to the other scanner manufacturers to make it easy to attach those STLs. So we really position EasyRx as a software for the practice. Mm -hmm. And at our entry level on the lab side, we have what we call the connected lab plan. So the conversation goes like this. Practice is like, you know what? We're struggling tracking all of our cases. We have patients coming in and their case isn't ready because they're not back from the lab. So we need to improve our tracking. And we think EasyRx can help us. But does my lab down the street use EasyRx? Yep. And we yeah. say, well, yeah. if they don't, you can invite your lab to sign up for free to receive the case. And we call that connected lab. So practices can, with a connected lab account, can receive a case, check in a case, communicate with those comments and clinical notification. They can receive the supporting digital file. They can mark the case as completed. They can mark the case as shipped. They can copy in the tracking information. So they can completely communicate with their practices and there's no charge to the lab to do that. Oh. I would think it would make that a lot easier. Like I had a, for instance, today we missed a date, client called, case wasn't ready. You know, they're on the phone, but it could have been easily fixed yesterday had they been checking or we'd been checking and realized that they had the patient appointed today and they didn't have the case. And that would give mm -hmm. them a very easy way to track that. Yeah. All practices are tracking it somehow today, right? Yep. So that's not new. We know that's been around since we've started this, or dentistry's been around. What's new about EasyRx is now they have one application, one place that they go to do all of that tracking. So the analogy I use is it's just like when practices were computerizing their schedule and sending out those monthly statements and their correspondence with their practice management. We're doing the same thing for their lab cases. You know, think of it as we're computerizing the management of their lab cases. They can now log into EasyRx. We have a view, show me all the cases coming in in the next 14 days. And what is the status of those cases? Have they been received back from the lab? And they see a case, to your point, that's got a date needed of the 21st and it's the 19th. Then they've got a case that they can go work. and. They can call the lab, they can communicate through EZRX, but at least they can now be proactive easily to go track down those cases. Mm -hmm. Is a lab able to update the status? You know, as Yes. So how does the software know what the steps are to update? So the, the status of the cases are submitted, checked in, completed, and shipped. Okay. So we, keep it, we don't get into the detailed steps on the lab side. There's not a barb dropped it step? Yeah. Exactly. Have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Barb's contouring it right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, in Visual DLP, the lab can track all the detailed steps to manufacture the case. So you can get a, a crown prescription in. You can check it in. So the lab knows that it's been checked in. Then you can move it in production and say step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, all the way through production. And then mark it as completed, and then the practice will see the case is completed. So let me see if I get this straight. The EasyRx for the practice doesn't replace their practice software. It doesn't schedule patients and stuff, but it no. it helps organize their lab cases. But the EasyRx on the lab side can actually run production of a lab. Correct. Interesting. Correct. Okay. Well see, he's listening. Paying attention he's here. Listening. And Andy, isn't that where you come in? Didn't you create that part or on that part of the software? That's right. So my background, as I mentioned, was you know helping labs implement software, implement scheduling solutions, implement reporting, analytics. And so, you know, Visual DLP is the cloud-based lab management product that's integrated with the practice-facing EasyRx. So it's one platform now. You know, it's it's EasyRx but it has a component of lab management and case management, prescription management for the practices. So, and, and then for the labs also. So you go in and you train the laboratories how to use that system, the lab Correct. management systems? 
Exactly. We have a, an onboarding process that we bring labs through when they say, you know, we're ready to move forward with, with Genmar and EZRX. And we walk them through looking at their data. You know, a lot of laboratories use this as an opportunity to clean up, you know, decades worth of products or accounts that may no longer you know, be relevant. So there's a, a process we walk through cleaning up data, looking at the new software. Like, cause sometimes a lot of times you, you, you run your lab given the constraints of the tools you have. And yeah. so now we have this new tool, what can we now do? And so we talk about that while we're bringing the lab staff on board. Mm-hmm. And so there's always great conversations around, well, this is how we've always done it. Well, let me show you some options here. You know, here, here here's something you can consider. And now that you have this new tool, could we rethink some of this? And so you go in and teach people how to change, which is always super easy. We, we've gone through that whole deal <laughs> and uh, I know how difficult that is. And you sound like you know the lab industry quite well, kind of how we sound. You know, I've been fortunate enough to learn from you know, a lot of people in this industry about not only how they run their labs, but how they would like to run their labs. Um, that's really influenced a lot of the design of the software, a lot of decisions we made. We wanted to hold on to some of that, some of the proven technology that we had in DL plus things that we just knew worked because of how you know, labs view the, I don't want to say view the world, but how they operate. Right. Mm-hmm. But we also wanted to give them the flexibility to adapt to new ideas and new thoughts and, and new processes that we we've implemented. And so, yeah, you're right. It's tough to change, but it is a collaborative project. We work with the lab very closely and the staff um, through that, that onboarding process. So say you're onboarding and you get a laboratory in and they're using the software. How, how easy is it or how amenable is your company to like adding a report if they need a different report or, you know, yeah. you know, how often do you like update or change things based on feedback that you guys are getting from lab? I'll, I'll give you a case in point. I mean, we're working with a lab right now that needed, uh, the, the short answer is we feel like that's where our best ideas come from. All right. So listening to the customers listening to the staff, their challenges. We can't sit up here and design the best solutions without them. And so listening to them. uh, So the case of what we give you, we're working with a lab now that needed a camera attachment, you know, so we wanted to be able to capture images from a camera and save them right with the case. So they were capturing what was shipped to them in the box or sometimes the prescription. So I think we turned that around in probably three weeks for them because it's such a great idea yeah. and reports. We built a report writer in the software. So labs can actually tweak their own reports. So we'll bring the data out of the system, mm-hmm. bring it up to this report designer, and then let the lab change the messaging change the layout, change the colors, things like that. So that that's very common, you know, in DL plus we would get customer report requests all the time. So going forward, we said, all right, how do we improve this? You know, we want, we don't want to take that away. We can't. So we built a report writer into the software so they can write their own. That's genius. Well, thanks, Barbara. I appreciate that. I, I, yeah. <laughs> that software that we're using, we're always like, God, I wish I had this report or, you know, mm-hmm. can you make this report for us? And it's, it's constantly changing and, you know, it takes honestly months for some of these to go through. So that's really smart. You know, you're constantly thinking, well, what if I had this report or I could mm-hmm. run these numbers and analyze this? I mean, that's just, you know, constant change. It's always astonishing to me that, you know, at the end of the day, and I don't mean to group everyone together, but labs, the, the end result is the same, right? You guys are building very similar products, but how you do it is, like I said, I've probably been in two or 300 different labs. And I've seen a lot of different management techniques, analytics, KPIs. There, there's a lot of different touch points you guys look to to figure out how your, your business is running. Yeah, and even when we have like 200, we still need a couple more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, to follow up yeah. on Andy's comment, I think the um, special sauce of a software company is really listening to what customers are asking for and and even prospects are asking for and just paying attention to what you're hearing and implementing, you know, the features that you're getting asked about a lot or it seemed to come up in conversation or a lot, right? Like, let's not make this more complicated than it needs to be, right? Just pay attention. And then I think what 
Andy and I enjoy because we've been in software for a long time or we wouldn't enjoy it. It's fun to get a request feature from a customer and go do the feature and not only have that customer appreciate it, but have, you know, lots of other customers say, you know, it's really cool that you added that camera feature. Mm. And I guess I would say you would think that would be obvious if you ran a software company that that's how you would you know run the business. I don't know if all software companies do that, but that's really important to us. And that's what we like to do. Now we can't do everything right. But if you pay attention, you can really, you know, you can really understand, you know, this is a feature that not only this lab can benefit from, but a lot of labs can. Uh, we've had this feature request 15 times where well, we need to do it. And the fun part is doing that feature or adding that report. What's it like dealing with the dentists? So you, you get to deal with both sides of the story. Who's harder? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're right. It, we do get, we have two distinct customers that we yep. deal with, right? Dealing with a lab is much different than dealing with a practice, not in a negative sense, right? They just, their businesses are different. Mm-hmm. Just how they work is different. How they communicate is different, right? But it's the same thing, really. They, in the end, everybody just wants the product to work. And here's some suggestions on how, you know, maybe you could make it better, right? We still handle them the same, even though, They are different customers. We know that there's a lot of lab softwares out there, and I'm sure you guys are kept on top of what they offer. But what does EasyRx do that really makes it stand out over the other ones? I'll jump in here, Andy. I think there's really two things. And one is is very, very important. But it's very important that, so Genmar Visual DLP, which is our cloud-based offering, it's a full-feature dental lab management product. So feature-wise, I think uh, it's comparable to anything that's available in the market, but built on new technology, cloud-based, you're positioned long-term in a good spot. So it's a full-feature, very powerful dental lab management product. And then number two is with the integration with EasyRx, Visual DLP customers can now offer a fully functional, fully featured lab prescription digital workflow platform to their practice yeah. customers mm-hmm. that is fully integrated with visual DLP. And I don't think another lab management product has a kind of practice facing solution like EasyRx. So the differentiator would be in addition to just a full featured product, we now have EasyRx and visual DLP built on the same platform. And the visual DLP customer can invite their practices to use EasyRx to send them cases, which is great for the lab and great for the practice. Very nice. I'll add something to that, Elvis. Yeah. I talked about our history and our DNA at Genmar before EasyRx and Genmar became one. We we have a, a lot of experience working with multiple laboratory locations. So uh, lab networks, if you have sister or you know partner laboratories under the same corporate umbrella. So when we really laid down the design of visual DLP, we thought about what does it look like when a lab receives a case and it's not going to be manufactured in that building. It's going to be manufactured somewhere else in their network or in their... That never um, happens. What? That never happens. (laughs) Or maybe they're going to do some of it and they're (laughs) going to send it out to another location and then it needs to be shipped back to the doctor. Mm -hmm. So things like that, you know, we thought about, had been doing for a long time with some of our our customers. And when we built this new product, we made sure that we embraced that to sort of think about what's happening, what we see happening in the industry and and some of the trends. Is it easily adaptable to your small two, three person lab all the way up Mm -hmm. to your hundred employees kind of lab? Yeah. Great question. Um, So I think yes. And the reason for that is as a small laboratory, you still need to provide good customer service. You need to be able to answer questions about cases and, and when they need to be back or when they're going to be back. You also need something easy to use, right? That, that gives you, you know, access to invoicing, billing, to sort of the, the, the bare minimum to be called lab management software. Sure. Uh, do, you, do you need the production management side of, you know, assigning work? to technicians? Do you need real-time updates of dashboards? You know, that sort of thing? Probably not, unless you're just a numbers guy or a person and you want to sit there and 
watch that refresh. And it's Some people nerd out on that stuff. They totally do. <laughs> they totally do. But so we can, you know, we set systems up, we set labs up, smaller labs up in, you know, a couple of days that don't need all the data import. They can just go in and enter their customers and their products without importing from their prior system. All right. So it's easy for them to get going. Yeah. And some of these larger facilities, you know, some of these, these projects, these onboarding projects take, you know, two, three months because they want to go through it and they want to go through it right. They want to engage all the different departments. They want to make sure everyone has a voice in how this software will be implemented because they're going to have to live with it after that. Yeah. So you were talking about like you have one base laboratory, say our lab is based in Tampa and we have a lab based in New York and one mm -hmm. in, you know, Colorado and yeah. they can all speak to each other with this software? Yeah. So it's the way I like to say it is it, how do you want to separate the labs? Do they all run under one PL or are they all one reporting entity or are they separate PLs? So we can separate that out. Uh, we call them business units, but that rolls up to a corporate you know, structure. So if yeah, you wanted to do reporting true. above the business units, you could easily see that. If you wanted to share a case that came into Tampa, with a facility in Colorado to do a portion of production, mm -hmm. you can actually schedule that work in Tampa and it implements tasks or activities that are based in Colorado. Nice. So that production capacity gets sort of accounted for in Colorado. And is everything based on like minutes or units or? It, it, it's minutes. Yeah. We decided to use minutes mm -hmm. because it's just easier to track because you may have a technician who has to do more than one type of activity. Mm -hmm. per day or in their, you know, in their day. So standardizing to minutes just seemed to make sense. That's a good point. An issue I always ran in with the software we had when I was at the lab was you had one technician that did five different things. It was so right. hard to allocate the work to them in the software. Does EZRX handle that pretty well? It does because, you know, like as I mentioned, you may have someone doing multiple things. Yeah. Instead of capacity, how many minutes do we expect you to produce today. And then each of those activities are going to be allocated a minute uh, per unit or a minute per additional unit value. So when you assign the work, you can now see how much has been assigned to them based on the unit count in the case. And then it's corresponding minute value. And then as a manager or someone who's responsible, making sure these, uh, the technicians are loaded, you can then look across your work center and see you know, where are they halfway through the day? Are they halfway through their minute hmm. uh, allocation? Do you have different laboratories that have like, does it like, do you have to scratch your head because some labs it takes five minutes to do something and some labs it takes like 25 minutes to do the same thing? Or yeah, that... <laughs> I don't really get into that. Yeah. I don't get into that. Let's hear about all the fast technicians. Let's get their names. Yeah, yeah no, no, I don't, my I don't question really... Is, is, do you see that a lot, though, where you have different labs and the minutes really, really vary? That's my question. That's a great oh, question. Uh, yeah, I certainly have seen that. I, I don't dig into the, the why and how of that. Uh, yeah. No, I, I just think that's that's kind of cool because some, some labs just, you know, allocate minutes differently. I would think mm -hmm. that would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and I guess that goes back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, at the end of the day, you can point to a, a crown you know, produce here and a crown produce here. And it's, you know, I'm not gonna say they're identical, but there's essentially it's, you know, sure. similar type of product, how they produce it, what they think about while they're producing it is as varied as the individuals behind yeah. these labs, in my opinion. That'd be fascinating. It would be an interesting study. Yeah. Well, there's 480 minutes and then, you know, you got to take breaks away and, you know, mm -hmm. just different things. And how many minutes do you actually give your technicians for their eight right. hour day? And what does that look like? And yeah, I just find that fascinating. You know, one of the things I've said often is yes to all of that, but also it, you're looking at trends. Like I see this person's producing X number of minutes mm -hmm. you know, worth of work a day. Are they continuing to do that? Are they getting better? Are they getting worse? Is there something we need to maybe sit down and talk about from a you know, an HR perspective, or maybe we need to move you in another role? Yep. So that it gives you data to manage with yep. that you wouldn't usually have if you weren't tracking it. Agree. When people get the program, is it blank, or are there like steps and minutes allocated already that you can manipulate? I have some templates that we've used over the years to help people get started, right? So, yeah. so they're not faced with that blank page syndrome. And a lot of that is workflow related. Like, What are we seeing as common 
workflows mm -hmm. that labs have implemented. I do have access to some studies over over time. And again, these are just different perspectives that we've seen at labs. Sure. And so they may not apply across the board, but you know, we try to help as much as possible to eliminate that blank page syndrome. Yeah. It would be very daunting to get started. And it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yep. Do you usually see labs get into it that's never had a software or ones that are currently in one they're not utilizing? I think the most common scenario is uh, we're in software, but we don't use it you know, efficiently and we mm -hmm. don't know how to use it efficiently, right? And we, was one of those, you know, we bought it and just never implemented it. And the people who implement it are no longer with the lab. That's oh, yeah, problem. sure. Also seen, interestingly enough, more in the last year or two. I don't use software, but I need it now. Yeah. Or new labs starting. We've heard a couple mm -hmm. companies on the podcast mention that a lot of new labs are opening. That's post exactly what I mean. Yeah. 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 New labs. You know, we want to talk about software because we're growing and I can't keep track of it anymore. That's what I was going to ask you what the number one reason or, or that you've heard of people either switching or acquiring software. So answered my question so if somebody already has a software easy to integrate into yours is it like a pull the data out or are you rebuilding the database typically what we'll do if they're migrating from a client server sort of a legacy situation mm -hmm. then we will ask them to pull data we'll give them templates and we'll work from those templates to clean up products clean up accounts uh, workflows schedules things like that but if they don't have anything, then yeah, it's a blank start. Yeah. Are there any labs you run into that the software is not really meant for? Or do you think it's adaptable to everybody in our industry? It's mm, a good question. Um, like you ever go to a lab that said, we want to use your software. And then when you find out about them, you're like, mm, nah, it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> From a workflow and a technical um, perspective, no. Mm -hmm. it certainly could be. You know, maybe you need to change some of these practices or think about. Um, yeah. That's a tough one. I yeah. I have a good answer for that. I get it. What about a lab? You integrate in with a practice. The practice can see their cases and stuff. But what about like reporting data to that practice? Can they remakes? Yeah, just like stats, you know, remake stats or number of cases in a month. I mean, offices used to ask me this stuff all the time. You know, what's our average lab bill? Can they look at all this when they're integrated real easily? Right now, we're, we can we certainly pull that data from the, the lab management software. We're not pushing it back to EZRX, mm -hmm. you know, in real time. But, you know, Elvis, maybe you just gave us a, a great idea here. <laughs> what they can see in EZRX is they can see we have a feature called stats, at EZRX. So they can see number of cases submitted by lab. Mm -hmm. They can see the breakdown of those cases, like what we call parts. So let's say a prescription has three crowns on it, then that would count as one case. But if they looked at that particular crown for the month, they would see three because there were three individual crowns or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then they can request a remake on a prescription, so they can see their remakes also. So this would be more of what they've sent to the lab, not what the lab has done for them, which is what Andy's talking about. Yeah. But when they send to the lab, they can see that inside of EZRX. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Is it smartphone friendly? Both apps are, are built in the browser, so you run them in your browser on your phone or tablet or Okay, whatever. sure. Well, I know a yeah. lot of dentists that would shoot notes, you know, out and about or not at their office, that kind of thing. Yeah. I think it's important to have that ease of communication. I can easily log in. Nice. Are you guys going to any shows coming up, getting out and in the public, back in the public, I should say? Yeah, we would love to get back out more and more, right? For sure, we're doing lab day. Mm -hmm. Do you do the dentist and the lab meeting in Chicago? We traditionally have not done midwinter for EZRX, okay. but we're considering it this year. For sure, we'll be at lab day. I would think that you would use your labs to promote that as well to their clients. It seems yeah, exactly. like an easy sell. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever had resistance from one side working with the other? Like an, a practice has easy RX, they try to get their lab on board, the lab doesn't want to. and You know, we dealt with that more when we were first really pushing out easy RX. Sure. And we didn't have to explain it a lot, you know, back in 16 and 17 and 18, because we really were first to market pushing out what we offer. Less so now from the labs resisting EZRX just because 
more and more practices are using it. But sure, sometimes we do got to go through and explain the benefits to the lab, Mm -hmm. but less and less now, which has been wonderful. And both sides can utilize your company to help make that quote unquote sell. To Correct. the uh, to the practice because I could see as a lab you get into this and you want your practices to buy it or get into it also just to use it for the ease and you know some practices out there they uh, they're stuck in their ways you know well exactly yeah. staff, staff resistance is going to be on both sides for sure on the practice side also yeah do they mm-hmm. have a an electronic signature that they've got on that RX that that just goes in their um, number and everything already in there yeah exactly. When they submit a case, they sign and submit it uh-huh. is the actual work, work, workflow so that the lab gets a signed prescription with their ID and all that. Okay. Very cool. What's next for EasyRx? What's the cool thing you guys are bringing into the software that people can be excited about? All three products we will continue to enhance, which we've talked about. Probably the, the feature that we're going to roll out by end of year that Kind of the cool new feature is, and I mentioned our 3D product, EasyRx 3D, mm-hmm. but we've had integrated with it some automated AI technology. We've been scanning scans, and if there are brackets on the teeth, we've been digitally removing the brackets, Ooh. creating a new scan without the brackets on the teeth. This is more of an orthodontic application. Mm-hmm. But our next iteration, our service that we're adding is we're going to add automatic basing. So a scan will come into the lab and the lab can send those scans to EZRX3D automatic basing. And our service will trim the model, add a base to the model, either hollow or regular, and label the model with the patient's name. Hmm. So the lab will get back a print-ready 3D file that they can move right to production. So, you know, right now, a lot of time is spent just basing that open shell STL file that comes in. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Get it ready for 3D printing. Mm -hmm. We're now going to automate that process. How long does that take? A while. (laughs) From start to finish, you know, it's going to be, let's say, two minutes. Oh, I was thinking we'd get them back the next day. No, 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 it's going to be very fast. And so as part of this, Feature, we're adding a new screen in, in EasyRx 3D called the 3D Command Center. Mm-hmm. So the idea would be you open it up and maybe in the last hour you've received 27 new screens. And you go down and you review and you do click, 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 click and send those off. And you go do other work. In a few minutes, you come back and you've got 27 models based, ready to go to um, the next step. Wow. No matter how the data came to you. No matter the scanner, no matter... Well, it's going to be a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, Right now, we're certainly mainstream scanners. Sure. And the scan must be a pretty good scan. (laughs) As part part of that, but to that point, as part of the process, what's part of the service is a automatic optimization of the scan. Mm -hmm. So the process will clean up the scan before it bases the model. So it'll try to fill in any holes or voids remove any artifacts, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, So it's going to give it its best effort to base the model. It's not going to be successful all the time. If it's a bad scan, it's a bad scan. Sure. But if it works most of the time, it's going to save a lot of time for the person doing the work. Yeah, I think that's a huge benefit to labs. Yeah. Yeah, we're really excited about this. You should be. I'm excited about this because it takes forever. (laughs) Takes forever. Exactly. Well, guys, we appreciate you coming on the podcast. I, I'm fascinated by this EZRX. I always heard about it. I know it's big in the ortho labs. Yep. And I think it's interesting. I, I think you guys have a good product. I like it. Nice. Thank you. Me too. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah thank you for allowing us to, to join and participate. This was a lot of fun. Cool. Well, I'm sure we'll see you at the next show. And I'm looking forward to seeing where you guys go next. Me too. I can't wait to see you guys at a show. Hopefully in uh, February. Yeah, hopefully we're in Chicago. Yep. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about Wick Mix for a minute. There are 3D print resins for models that do a decent job, and then there is the Whip Mix Vera Models OS. 
Dr. Michael Scherer, a prosthodontist from Sonora, California, says, and I quote, Whipmix Vera Model OS is one of the finest model resins that I have ever worked with. It's amazing. The popular resins offer the dental laboratory a high quality, smooth surface finish, extreme precision, reliable accuracy, and fine detail. They can be used in the 385 and 405 nanometer printers, and they are compatible with the silicone-based separators. Vera Model OS print resins are available in ivory, golden brown, gray, and white colors for any model application. For more information, call 1-800-626-5651 or visit Whitmix.com. So guys, have you seen the high prices of precious metal these days? They are close to record highs on gold and palladium. We know that you are using less precious metals in your lab these days, but if you send in half of what you sent in five years ago, your scrap return will be higher than it was five years ago. Because of the high PM prices, you owe it to yourself to find a trusted, reputable refining company. Look no further. Colzer Refining has been tested, trusted, and reputable for over 100 years. They burn, melt, and assay all under one roof at their state-of-the-art refining facility in Wardburg, Tennessee. They have doubled their production capacity to ensure your scrap return within two weeks. They use an ICP for their assay technique with the fire assay method if needed as well. With all the non-precious material that has become present in today's restorations, it is important that we ensure the assay sample is homogenous. At Colzer, they take the extra step to x-ray the top and the bottom after they melt the bar to make sure the precious metal percentages are the same. If not, copper is added until they are positive and the bar is homogenous. They know that this step is very important to get a precise essay result. Their reimbursement to the customer is after their 10% refining fee. They have zero additional fees. If you need any free shipping containers, which contain a UPS prepaid, fully insured label, please visit mydental360.com forward slash refining or call the director of precious metal refining, our friend Tony Cercelli, directly at 914-906-1843. So collect those vacuum bags, floor sweeps, miscast and spills, and get the best scrap return in the industry with Colzar Refining. Tested, trusted, and honest. And we appreciate your support of the podcast, Colzar. Sorry, guys, I'm hoping Elvis didn't screw up Todd's name too much, but a big thank you to Todd and Andy for coming on our podcast to talk about making it easier in the lab with EZRX. I am super excited to see that you have taken on the task of automating the model printing, and I think it will be a big help with labs struggling to find employees right now. If you want to learn more about EZRX and see if it is a good fit for your lab, head over to easyrxcloud.com and make sure you let them know you heard it on our podcast. Awesome, everybody. That's all we got for you. Have a good week. See ya. Bye. I don't think you need to do it again. I think it was beautiful. Oh, thank you.